Alrighty, we are working on the trusses today. Top two trusses. Um, they're exactly eight feet long, maxed out. And at the bottom here, um, comes in at a 16, de 16 degree. Um, you have to pay no attention to those lines there. If you can see them, I screwed up. Anyhow, we're gonna be cutting these two pieces. These are six by 10, uh, white oak. And uh, I'm gonna use a circular saw. And I haven't decided whether I'm gonna use a hand saw to finish cutting him or use my sawzall. I mean, it's hot today. So let's see what happens. I use my hand saw. I usually um, use my hand saw when I've been cutting these timbers, but they always been six by six or so. Um, normally this is six by 10, so this is the longest I've done. And this will be the first time I've done white oak. I've been done uh, pine and red oak. So this will take a little bit. So we'll probably speed fast forward this. Alrighty, got the top cut and the back cut. These are pretty much all roughed in. I still have to cut in a uh, bird's mouth on both of these, but I'm gonna wait till I get the truss actually assembled to get the better dimensions for that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a uh, belt sander, three inch belt sander, uh, 220 grit sandpaper and uh, I'm just sanding them off, cleaning up the surface a little bit, getting all the uh, marks that might be on there and just smoothing it out a little bit so that it takes stain better. So it's kind of quick, but I'll let you watch a little bit of it. Alrighty, so we're working on the, uh, I don't know if you can see this, the cross post. So it's that beam right there going across on these trusses. Um, got them all marked out. And I've cut the one side with a chainsaw, or not chainsaw, a circular saw. I've used a hand saw to cut down on the edge on each edge and then flipped it over and marked so that I can cut with a circular saw again. Now I got it this side over here. I, I tried using a sawzall but um, it'll walk. There's, I mean there's a little web here still you got to cut you know it's probably almost two inches wide. Try to cut it with a hand saw. This is so heavy um, and diagonally cutting across white oak uh, it is just too hot to do that. So I ended up getting it done. Um, I had to clean up this mess here a little bit. But I got it cleaned up. I think it's decent enough for the truss. Clean it up maybe a little bit more. But we'll see what happens when we get into final fit. Um, it's just so much work. I don't know what the best thing to do. I'm going to try doing a handsaw on this one again. And see what happens. Um, the circular... Or, the Sawzall, the blade I got, isn't a full six inches, it's like five inches, and it seems like it wants to wander a little bit more than I'd like. So we'll try with a handsaw on this one, and I'll let you know how that one works. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, I used the Sawzall on this, and that actually came out really clean. There's a little edge there, but not bad. I can sand that all out quickly. 
Um, I did again over here, and of course, the way to the log, I got a little, a little break, so I'll have to clean that mess up there. But I think this still is the fastest way. I will uh, show you videotape this a little bit here, and uh, hopefully get you a chance to see how much fun this really is. took but it's a lot faster than the handsaw it's uh that's 23 inches of diagonal caught through uh six by ten white oak so that if you want to do the calculations that'll tell you what the pitch is on this but uh now all i gotta do is cut in the uh mortises for the king post so let me get set up for that So I'm just cutting the notches for the mortise and uh, I'm just eyeing it up. I'm just going on this inside rib and I'm just cutting away and just keep moving over to the other side. <laughs> Try to get a little closer to that edge cut here, but I, I went a little wild here, so I'm going to... Time for a little chisel and hammer action. All right. Again, I try to use this old beat up one to hit the corners. And use my better chisels to do the cleanup. A little elbow grease goes a long way. Guess I should get a bucket.
Alrighty, a little update here. So, I got the two posts uh, done for one side. I'm using three tie in six by tens to tie the two posts together. And uh, on the second post. So, uh, measured these up. You can see there's a bunch of lines. I hope you can see. But I saved it. Unfortunately, I knew there was some rot on this side, or, but I didn't realize how far up it went. So when I started drawing it, I was going to be, the top of the post was going to be there. But I had to slide it all back down, so I had to redo my marks. But I've uh, cut all of these uh, mortises, I've notched them one inch thick. And uh, I've got that side uh, cut in. Now all I have to do is cut other ribs to break them off. So I thought I'd bring you in here so you can see that. It goes really pretty fast. Alrighty, we're into the assembly mode. This here is the one, um, gonna be the one side. We've got the two posts. There are three cross members and then a top cap over there. Um, this one here I've been staining, but I ran out of stain. I've got everything, uh, I think pretty well rough fitted in. I had to do a little clean up here on these grooves. My concept here is gonna be to use the tractor here lift this post up flip it and set it down and hopefully i can get it going through in there i um i pre-drilled all the holes both posts i made a template here put it on this edge it's three inches in three inches in this is 10 inches and three inches up it's six inches wide in the cut let me redo that again three inches in and three inches in and three inches up on a six inch that pretty much gets all the holes centered so i can put um the drill or the yeah so i can put the uh, bolts in boy i'm having a hard time today put all the bolts in and it should look pretty uniform so let's see what happens when we get this thing going this is the um top piece it's a 10 by 10 six inch cut six inch cut i think i want an inch and a half inch deep so hopefully when we get this going get this piece this post on these cross members this cap will fit and i can screw into that and hold this whole assembly together all right i realized something here when i put this thing on i looped it double i slid it across if I put this thing on a locket, I will never get this strap off without cutting it. So, I've uh, put a 2x2 two two in there, and it's down on that side. I'm going to lower it, and hopefully <laughs> be able to slide this thing out, and uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what I just did. Hopefully I can get out of this. Otherwise, we got to take this thing out back down. That doesn't sound like fun. Well... must be precise we're a little tight way high here i'm not sure what's going on there these are all the same length and uh we're tight here so i knew it was going to be tight but i didn't realize it's going to be that tight so we're going to see what's going on here 
and uh, figure out what's going on. Let me uh, mark this thing up and I guess I'm going to be taking this beam back down, unfortunately. Alrighty, after I don't want to tell you how many times, but it was like four times I took this piece off. I kept trying to take little bitsy pieces off at a time and was hoping to get it. And uh, this center section just gave me a lot of grief. It just gave me a lot of grief. But I got it in and um, we seem to be nice and square. And nice and square. But, I think this has a little bow in it. I have about an eighth inch gap. I don't know if you can see the daylight through there. Um, it's not a structural, but it's bothering me. But, to take care of it correctly, I guess I would need to shave, take this all apart, and shave like an eighth inch off of that one, and an eighth inch off of that one, to get that one perfect. What are your thoughts? Is that something I should do? I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking not. I think I'm just gonna let it roll. That's my thought. It's not perfect by no means, but um, I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't want to mess with it. I think it'll be good enough. So I'm going to put the screws in and anchor this thing in and then we're going to try putting the top on. So what am I using for this? I'm using these uh, timber headlocks, six inch long. So they have the big head on them. Hope you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like you can see that. Good, good. So I'm putting two on each side of these cross supports. Uh, they're six inch beams, notched an inch, so the thread's going in only an inch, um, but that would be a three eighths long leg screw. That's six trying to hold these together on each side. Sounds like enough to me. time to try to set this thing on the side because I do not want to try to um, put that top on like this. So let's see how we can do that. I think we'll tip it. As long as we got those straps on it and uh, set it down on its side on the other two posts. <laughs> 